Hi, everyone. Yes, I'm Jacinta, I'm a PhD student um, in organizational studies at the Warwick Business School. And my focus is really on leadership and management in health, healthcare settings, particularly hospitals. Uh, my, supervisor, my supervisors are Mike English and Jerry McGiven. So the work that I'm going to present today is just a component of my PhD work. The other component is largely informed by work that I've done in the past, which looked at documenting health workers' experiences uh, in implementing the clinical guidelines that you've had colleagues talk about today and most of yesterday. Uh, but for today's session, I'll just talk about mid-level managers in these same district hospitals that have now become county hospitals. Uh, so as way as uh, part of the outline of this presentation, I'll just start by saying what the mid-level managers are and why I'm interested in them. And these two bits are largely based on a literature review that I published last year. And then I'll go ahead and talk about my philosophical approach in doing this work. And then the other bit will be on empiric work on the mid-level managers in Kenya. I just started the field work uh, beginning of this month, so I will not give you any results, rather just the main objectives and the approach that I'm going to use. So I'll just start off by saying why I'm interested in clinical leadership. I think there's a whole variety of people everywhere, I'd say worldwide, everybody thinks leadership is important and everybody talks about leadership. And like Jerry mentioned in the morning, different people will um, define leadership differently. But for my case, um, the interest in clinical leadership largely comes from the work that I did in the past. Uh, this work that I've said, I looked at the, the barriers that health workers faced in trying to implement the clinical guidelines. And these two quotes are borrowed from that work that I did. Uh, you can see the first quote there from a medical officer intern who talks about the experience when they first started working in the hospital. And that shows how there is no form of orientation of new staff into departments. It's just expected, according to the court, he says, it's, a, it's probably expected that from my training, a patient requires a surgical clinic, so I'll send him there. But nobody comes and tells me, you learn as you go along. Uh, the second quote comes from a, a, a staff who's worked in the hospital for a long time, and that shows the kind of breakdown in communication structures in these hospitals. Uh, the nurse talks about how they only meet as cadres. They, there'll be a nurse's meeting, a clinical officer's meeting, but in all the years that I've worked here, I've never really seen a departmental meeting. Similar quotes from the work that I did before um, include one quote here by uh, a health worker who talks about a senior level manager who delegates responsibility to a more, depart a more junior departmental leader but you can see that this is a kind of delegation where there is no accountability or follow-up to see whether the person took the job seriously. And the last quote there is uh, particularly important because it shows then what leadership can achieve. So um, this health worker talks about a facilitator. He's very helpful. He's a link between us and the administration in case there are supply shortages and he makes sure we get them. So this facilitator in that work that we did in the past were actually um, hospital staff that were selected by their colleagues to spearhead activities of implementing the clinical guidelines. So they, were, they, they acted as um, opinion, leader, opinion leaders or champions, if you like, in trying to get people to do the right thing. So from the literature that I reviewed, uh, mid-level managers are basically managers who hold uh, primary administrative responsibilities in the departments that they had, as well as being in charge of clinical services, and in some cases are referred to as clinical hybrid managers. Uh, they're directly involved in planning and coordinating production of services, which are specific to their own units. And health workers below them look up to them to actually bridge the gap between the senior managers and the frontline workers. So that's just a schematic presentation um, of what I mean. So the guys in red there are the mid-level managers. Uh, so why the interest in mid-level managers? Uh, literature has shown that uh, these managers are 
in most settings are responsible for translating the senior management goals and objectives into routine work packages that make sense to the frontline workers. And a lot of the literatures in mid-level managers has focused on their, on their value as organizations go through change because most of them are required to maintain a balance in the organizations during those transitions such, such that there is no chaos if the change is too fast and to pre prevent inertia where people are a bit resistant to change. So again, the most of the literature on mid-level managers have, have basically um, uh, they've basically focused on the role of mid-level managers as information brokers, so where they're expected to communicate the right information from the senior manager to the frontline workers, which is a really very powerful uh, role, because it's not just a passive information of, uh, it's not just a passive process of passing information from one level to another. Uh, Mid-level managers who are supported will actually try and make, the inf make sure that the information they pass actually motivates the frontline workers to do the right thing. And another important role of mid-level managers is because of their hierarchical positioning in the health system, in, in organizations, they are able to strategize powerful and informal networks, which can actually get people to buy into change more than the official discourse from the senior managers. So, um, as I mentioned, I conducted a literature review on the value of the roles of mid-level managers. And from this literature review, these were the most commonly reported roles for the mid-level managers. So the roles that you see in the concentric circles there were the most commonly reported in the 23 papers that I finally included in the, in the literature review. And the ones that are right here in the triangular bit are the intrinsic factors that a good mid-level managers should have. So while, while all the papers that I abstracted in the review actually came from the developed world, I did feel that there was a lot of parallels with the Kenyan system, and this is for a number of reasons. For example, uh, professionals in both sides of the world are people who, who hold a lot of power and autonomy uh, both worlds have shown that um, they are particularly uh, difficult people to get them to do the right thing, that is, in terms of following evidence-based guidelines. And the other important thing that is shared in both places is that they, the, the, the clinical leaders in each of the places are actually shy away from taking on leadership and managerial roles. So I felt that, um, that the fact that this papers were mainly from the, develop the Western world, didn't limit uh, the relevance to Kenya. So uh, this review highlighted some of the roles that the mid-level managers can play towards achieving uh, high quality services in public hospitals like ours. And looking at some of these roles, uh, some of these things prompts clinicians to accept, uh, to accept managerial roles, and this might lead to emergence of hybrid clinical managers across the settings. And this review is also, the, some of these things that came from the review are particularly important as the country undergoes devolution, as Sofa talked about in the morning, because there'll be major changes that will be needed to improve the uh, delivery of service, and these middle managers will be part of that through the support of the senior managers, even though they are not part of the county health management team. Again, the roles identified can help in, inform and improve current leadership and management trainings. Kenyan Kenya now has seen a lot of leadership and management training being offered by a lot of private bodies, but they've recruited a lot of health workers from the public sector. However, this, these trainings are main, have mainly focused on the more technical skills like budgeting and financing and stuff like that. And I felt that some of the roles that I showed in the concentric circles can help improve uh, these trainings by uh, showing people to focus more on the more softer skills that are not addressed. So, um, like I mentioned, leadership is a very wide topic, and there are very many no number of ways that you can approach it. Uh, particularly for me, I felt that it was, I, I felt it important and, and fit to look at leadership as an identity. And this is mainly because hospitals are a kind of bureaucratic organization, according to Minsberg. 
uh, they are characterized by individuals who are very powerful, they, with high autonomy, and who are very territorial about their profession. Again, the socialization process of professional health workers and the, and the standardization of the process himself, itself has led to the formation of professional identities within healthcare settings. Uh, but what is interesting is that the identities themselves are not rigid, they are very socially constructed levels that are subject to neg negotiation and routinization in organization. And when, when we require clinicians to take up leadership roles, you, are actually try you, you actually pose a threat to these professional identities. And I thought that's, that's an important thing to look at. And the threat comes in because the mid-level managers will now feel like they are faced with a unique dilemma of dualism. You know, they have to be a manager and they have to be a clinician. And that makes them feel as if they have a need to maintain collegiality towards the profession and to be respected by their own peers at the same time answer to the position that they've been appointed to as a manager in the, in the, in the organization. So the use of identity is useful in that way and it actually also encourages the investigation of the actual behaviors of the leaders and the managers and how that will influence the outcomes, uh, the service delivery process rather than just considering their roles in terms of intentions that have been formulated by their bosses. So in that regard, uh, my philosoph uh, philosophical assumption in, in the methodology that I will use uh, comes from the social constructionism. Uh, and basically, social construction of leadership uh, understands helps in understanding how leadership identities are formed and enacted. Uh, the, the value of social constructionism is that it gives credit to the different kinds of actors as active constructors of the context, and they're, so they're just not passive participants or reagents. Uh, it also allows multiple interpretations and understandings of the context and appreciates that leadership is itself uh, socially constructed and, uh, and a bit flexible in terms of it's constantly negotiated by the actors who are involved. I felt uh, that social construction um, lens, again, would help legitimize the use of narratives or stories as a methodology to try and understand leadership microprocesses uh, because this is the first time I was thinking about using stories rather than formal interviews to get the views of the mid-level managers in terms of how they perceive their roles. Uh, so this is a snapshot of the proportion of uh, trained management staff in Kenya, uh, but this was about five years ago. Uh, 2008, so there was an assessment that was done by the USAID Management Sciences for Health and others, where they talked to a number of health managers across public facilities in the country. And you can see here that the highest proportion of untrained man management staff come from the district hospitals. Not very much different uh, from those in regional facilities, so the province and, and the district, but these are the the more senior managers who are part of the health management teams. And again, more people trained in the headquarters in the ministries of health. So the district hospitals here showed the highest num numbers of untrained uh, health management staff. And in the same study, when uh, these health managers were asked what are the most important management skills, you can see that the highest there was leadership, then communication skills, interpersonal skills. So the People actually ask for the more softer skills than the more technical skills that I was talking about, the more technical skills that most of the leadership trainings in Kenya are focused on. So these things are still largely missing, and part of the reason why I think this work that I'm doing is important. So um, going straight to the empiric work that I've just started doing, these are generic organogram of of the district hospitals that are now county hospitals in Kenya. Well, despite the change uh, from district to county, not much has changed in the district hospitals, except maybe in the occasional places where you'd find that the medical superintendent is probably also part of the county health management team. And so the people in green here, 
these guys are the senior level managers of the hospitals and the health administrative officer is really the equivalent of what you have as health managers here. They have no clinical training. And then the, right below them you have the mid-level managers. So these are the mid-level managers. So you have mid-level managers in charge of other departments. But for this work, my main interest is on mid-level managers who are heads of clinical departments, so medicine, pediatric surgery, and obsgyn, as well as nurses who are in charge of the, of the inpatient wards. And then below these mid-level managers, you then have the frontline health workers, which is really a mixture of uh, medical officers, clinical officers, and interns, as well as nurses. Uh, what I'd like people to really notice is the parallel lines of supervision, something which I think Edwin just alluded to in his talk. So both of these people, this mid-level manager and this mid-level manager will be in the same department, but the supervision lines are very different. So it might very, very well be that probably in a year or, or, or more, all these people will never be in the same forum discussing the same things or probably aware what the vision or direction of that department is. So the nurses report down there and um, the clinical people, that's their line. So these senior managers are involved in setting the vision and goals of the hospitals, mobilizing and managing resources and competing interests. They are they're part of the hospital management team and therefore they're generally involved in the oversight of organizational process. The, de the departmental managers or the mid-level managers, uh, specifically the clinical, the ones who head clinical departments, are charged with tran translating high-level goals and objectives into more, more specific contextually appropriate goals, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so the, my main objective for this work was to examine how the efforts to improve service delivery through adoption of recommended practices like the, the, the clinical guidelines in Kenyan hospitals depend on health workers' response to such improvement efforts, the hospital context, and the action of mid-level managers, and then the interaction of all these things. Specifically, I have two main objectives. One is to understand and make meaning of the roles of these hybrid mid-level managers in their hospitals, and to understand what the senior level managers and the frontline workers think about those roles of the mid-level managers. And then secondly, uh, uh, to explore how mid-level managers actually lead, so the micro, -pra micro practices of the leadership process, uh, that's one of the things that I would like uh, to explore, and also to to get the perception of the frontline workers to the kind of leadership that they get from the mid-level managers. So it's a comparative case study of three hospitals that vary in the challenges they face, so county, county hospitals. And um, purposive sampling of the hospitals is what I did uh, to get an informative sample rather than a generalizable one. And the categories of health workers that I'm involved in are the senior level managers, which are about four in each hospital, because that's the number you'll get in most typical hospitals. The same number is for the mid-level managers and up to around 12 frontline workers in each of the hospitals. So this is just a sneak peek of uh, some quotes that I got from, from uh, mid-level managers who are pediatricians in this hospital. Uh, while I was doing my pilot work uh, sometime last year. And in the first quote there, you can see a pediatrician who says, of course, as my work as a pediatrician is that I'm supposed to work, to work in the ward, manage the children, work in the clinics, manage infants, but the issue of management, that's a completely different thing, I don't know. So they completely separated themselves from doing anything else other than the clinical work. A different, a different uh, pediatrician talks about you know, these new nurses should get the information on orientation to, in the wards they are working in from the previous group. It's not up to me. So 
again showing the siloing of the different cadres of health workers where whereas a head, the, this pediatrician is a head of department but doesn't feel it's up to them to tell people, well, this is what my department does, but that's up to, to people from their own cadre to tell them. So this reiterates the point that Kenyan mid-level mid managers are either unaware and or they're reluctant of the, their roles as leaders and managements and managers in the units that they head and that may be because of the dilemmas of, the, of trying to be two people at one. And again, in the construction of these managerial identities, the point that they feel they need to be collegial towards their own profession is strongly felt, and this has also come up in the data that I, I have collected earlier this month, although I am not presenting this, uh, these things are still the same. So in conclusion, and this is, well, not in conclusion from the work I've done since I've just begun, but in conclusion from the literature that I've read, it's shown that despite the importance in implementing better practices in, there's very little research on mid-level managers in low-income countries. And Kenyan hospitals, and this is based from the pre previous work that I've done, have leadership gaps and poor communications, between, especially between the senior administration and lower cadres, and this prevents better practice. Therefore, strengthening mid-level managers can help improve performance. Yeah, thank you.